Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the people show. Checking the pulse of Husker Nation, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to show Coach Frank Solich some love for going into the College Football Hall of Fame, smash that like button. But before I officially bring him on, he is one of just seven Husker coaches to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Nebraska features 27 other people that are in the Hall. This year's Hall of Fame class has 19 players and three coaches that are going in. Coach Solich played fullback for Bob Devaney in the 60s. He was actually a member of Coach Devaney's first recruiting class in 1962. He earned all Big 8 honors in 1965 and was the first Husker to rush for 200 yards in a game. Coach Solich coached 19 years as, as an assistant coach and helped Nebraska win three national titles. And during his 15-year tenure as the running backs coach, he helped coach and produce 13 all-conference running backs, including Heisman Trophy running back Mike Rozier. In his six seasons as Nebraska's head coach, he had a 753 winning percentage, including the Huskers' last conference championship in 1999, and coaching Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch in 2001. He also coached at Ohio for 16 years, 2005 to 2020, and he currently sits, sits as the winningest coach in the Mid-American Conference history. And, pretty cool side note, the turf inside of Peden Stadium there at Ohio is known as Frank Solich Field. How you doing, Coach Solich? <laughs> I'm good, Adam. How are you doing? I'm doing good, and I appreciate yeah. you joining me. So, what was your reaction when you found out that you're going into the College Football Hall of Fame, and what does that mean to you? I actually found out uh, in a manner that I guess I wasn't supposed to. I, I started receiving some emails and texts and uh, a couple phone calls from people that said congratulations on uh, being in the Hall of Fame and uh, making it in the Hall of Fame. And I, uh, I said, well, that's, that's kind of news to me <laughs> you know, that, uh, that, I, uh, that I'm in it, but you, you might know something that I don't, but, uh, you know, we'll, I guess we'll, we'll find out here. And um, it wasn't too much later, a, uh, uh, truck pulls up outside that uh, that delivers. Uh, uh, I think it was a UPS truck, maybe, and it delivered uh, uh, a football uh, with a letter uh, notified me that I was inducted into the uh, into the Hall of Fame. So it um, uh, it, it was obviously great for me to uh, to hear that. I, I I feel very good about it. So many people along the way. Um, help you out when you get an award something like this you know you, you just don't do it uh, on your own and I, i've been fortunate to be around a ton of really good coaches and then obviously you know i got a chance to to go to nebraska uh play under under coach Devaney, and uh, and, and so around nothing but but great coaches through uh through my early career and uh you know that that inspired me in a lot of different ways. So I was very fortunate to uh, to be around those kind of people. So, what was it like playing for Coach Devaney, and what did you learn from him that helped you in the future? Well, um, it was great uh, playing for him. You know, he was a, a pretty relaxed guy. Um, you know, he he was driven to win, obviously, like uh, mm -hmm. almost all coaches coaches are. But he really had a way of dealing with the players. His players uh, talking to him, uh, coaching him, that just made you feel at ease. And it got to the point where you really believed in the guy and really, uh, really enjoyed playing for him. And, and so you got his best. And so he was able to bring out the, the best um, in, in people. You know, and then obviously being around Tom as long as um, I was uh, as an, a part-time coach, and then, uh, then as a a uh, assistant coach and running back coach and assistant head coach and then uh, eventually head coach. But the, all that time around Tom was, you know, just I, I, I grew tenfold in terms of uh, the coaching profession and really uh, understood uh, uh, what it was all about from a lot of different angles. And uh, so around those kind of people just made everything uh, – a lot easier for me and, uh, and, and and really special. They both had their way of uh, reaching players and getting things done on the field, uh, in, in the room, when you're preparing for games with your coaches, how they dealt with coaches, how they dealt with players. Um, 
you know, that part of it was uh, was somewhat similar. Um, but obviously their style of coaching and, and uh, to a degree um, was different. But um, great guys to uh, to be under uh, one playing and one, one coaching. I couldn't ask for anything more. And, of course, as you know, both of them are in the Hall of Fame. What what did it mean for you? Because right before he retired, Coach Osborne chose you as his successor. What did that mean for you? It means a great deal. Um, you know, obviously, I uh, um, in in him telling me that uh, that you know it was going to move forward with me being the the next head coach after him. That um, it, it it was a little bit of a, a surprise and shock at that uh, point in time. You know, I, I just felt like Tom would uh, would maybe go forever. I, I never looked at Tom as a guy that uh, was worried about uh, the amount of work he has to put in and, and all that that goes into coaching. He, he just seemed to handle that really well. And so I thought he'd just keep going. And then uh, when he when he did tell me, you know, it was a, a, a little bit of a surprise, but, but, you know, the way he had moved me up um, – to assistant head coach, you know, certainly let me know that um, in some respects that, you know, he felt good about me and uh, and, and that maybe maybe down the road there would be that opportunity. You know, I got a, I got a little nervous when, <laughs> when I actually found out that the whole thing was going to come off. Number one, um, you know, it's a, it was a program that's known a, a around the country uh, as one of the top in the country, you know, you're you're running uh, one of the better programs uh, uh, in in the in the country, and obviously, uh, you're following Bob Devaney, uh, who Tom followed, <laughs> and then I followed Tom. Uh, those are two uh, uh, great coaches that um, you know it's pretty hard to follow. And yep. uh, so, uh, what I decided to do was just to be the guy that I am, um, take away from, uh, from what I know about those guys and what made those guys great. Um, but then to also to be myself, you know, um, I can't be a Tom Osborne. In fact, I don't think there's another Tom Osborne out there to be very yep, careful with. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I couldn't be a Bob, De, Bob Devaney, but, um, you know, I could certainly take things from him. I've, I, I learned from him try to compile all that and be the best coach I could be. So in 1999, okay, when you were the coach there, and I always have one hard-hitting question every year. This is a hard-hitting question for this interview, all right? So 1999, you guys finished ranked second in the coaches' poll after beating Texas 22-6 to in the Big 12 championship game and beating, at that time, defending national champ Tennessee, who was number six in the country in the Fiesta Bowl 31-21. Had you guys had an opportunity to play number one Florida State instead of Virginia Tech, who ended up losing by 17 points in the national title game, how do you think that game might have gone, Coach? Um, well, I'd, I'd like to think it would have been a great game. Um, you know, both, uh, both teams were uh, really highly talented football teams um and you know we had uh, we had great coaches on our staff uh certainly they had great uh, great coaches great fan support um on, on from both teams uh, um, so it would have been an exciting i think very interesting uh football game but all right so you're at you're the man who recruited me and the man i committed to play for unfortunately we weren't together as long as i would have liked but my question is do you have any memories of yours truly from the short time that we did have together from the recruitment aspect of it and, and the short time that um that that we were together it did not surprise me that you were turning out to be the player that um that, that, that i uh, felt you would be getting to know you it became obvious that you had great character and, you know and that you were hard you, you were you were driven to to be as good as you could become and with that um, in mind, you certainly had the tools to be uh, an outstanding athlete. So you add all that together and, um, you know, you got yourself what you want in, um, in, in a recruit. When you're in the recruiting process as to what kind of leader a guy would be, um, felt you'd be a very good leader. But uh, as it turned out, you were an exceptional leader. And um, so it, that all came to, together to... Uh, 
make make you a, a great Nebraska football player and and one that was truly deserving of uh, all your accomplishments. Well, I appreciate your kind words. Um, and here's a story. I don't know. I don't think I've ever shared this publicly. So I'm actually married to former defensive end Jeff McBride. He was a walk-on from Brule, Nebraska. And so when they found out I was going to interview you, and they had mentioned this to me before, so let's go back in time to the Wednesday before Thanksgiving in 2001. Jeff's a freshman, okay, and he's having surgery, all right? And his mom and dad, Joe and Sheila, said that after practice, late that Wednesday, getting ready for a big game, at Colorado, you showed up at the hospital and you waited for over an hour while they finished the surgery. And to this day, they were just flabbergasted that the head coach of Nebraska would show up for over an hour in the middle of a week getting ready for a big game for a freshman walk-on who was having surgery. And so I thought that that was a story that I just shared that the fine yeah. folks at home might enjoy. So You know, uh, you know what? It was, it was very simple for me to, uh, to do that. Um, that's what Bob Devaney would have done. That's what Tom Osborne would have done. And so just growing up, um, in the, in the business with, uh, with those, those guys, it was just natural for me to, to follow in, in their footsteps in that manner. You're, uh, you're going to try to be the best that you can be in terms of things outside of, uh, football and on the, on the football field. So, uh, that, that was easy to do because that's what, the coaches that I've seen um, uh, that I was with and Bob and Tom, that's definitely what, uh, what they would have done. And so it just seemed uh, it, it was just basically natural for me to, uh, to, to care for a player and to, to do those kind of things. Well, here's the deal is 22 years later and uh, it still resonates with them for sure. All right, so I got a couple of questions left. Before we dive into that, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor because this show is brought to you by DPS Concrete Construction, your local concrete experts. You can check them out at dpsconstruction.net. If you, this is up your alley in your line of work, Jason Armstrong's a get, great guy to work for. If you're looking to have some great work done in this area, go to dpsconstruction.net. All right, last couple of questions. You were... Brought back and honored at the spring game last spring. What were the feelings and emotions you had last spring when you were honored at halftime during the spring game? And what did that mean to you? Yeah, that was uh, the first time I've been back, um, not only on the field, but um, uh, in, in the office area, in the stadium. Um, and so it was, it was great to be back. Glad to be there. You know, Matt um, did a great job of, of making me feel comfortable and uh, and and feel good about about coming back. It, it wasn't a a deal where I held any grudges or um, you know we're in a game that um, things can happen and uh, they're not all going to be good and um, you know you got to be willing to fight through them and bounce back and because that's what you ask of your players and so that was um, uh, easy for me to. To, I, I say this in a way that it may sound strange to you, but uh, easier for me to to move on in the business, um, you know, because um, number one, I knew I was a good coach, and so it, you know what was transpiring was not necessarily my problem, and and so um, you know I I was looking forward to continuing in business, and fortunately got a chance to. To get to Ohio University, and uh, and you know I loved it there, just as I loved it at, at Nebraska. You know, those kids wanted to win every bit as badly as the, the guys from Nebraska. So, uh, so I had a great time and, uh, and 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 enjoyed it. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I came back um, again. I felt felt very welcome from the the coaches, um, administrative people to. Uh, uh, to the fans. We were glad to have you back. And my, I just got one last question for you. What are your impressions of Coach Rule so far? And what are your thoughts on the future of Nebraska football as they head into the new Big Ten, so to speak? I, I really like Coach Rule. You know, he, uh, I, I think he's doing things uh, the right way, the best way. Let me put it that way. Maybe the best way for Nebraska to, 
move forward. You know, he got there and, um, you know, he contacted Coach Osborne. He wanted to make sure he picked his mind a little bit and found out what Tom was all about and, and why he was so successful, you know. And, and um, so he, he wasn't afraid to go to Tom and, uh, to, and, and to ask him some questions, you know. He contacted, he did contact me, and, uh, you know, we, we, had, we had a few good texts, few good talks. I knew, knew him a little bit be, because um, when I was at Ohio, um, we coached against him. And um, so I, you know, through watching film, I knew technically, uh, you know, he was a very sound coach. And, and um, but the more you are around him, the more you get to know him. Um, the more you understand what he's all about. He's great for the sport. Um, I think kids will love playing for him. I, I think there's um, great success ahead for Nebraska. Now, it doesn't come uh, instantly, uh, necessarily. It could come quick, but it doesn't necessarily come quick. It doesn't necessarily come easily. But um, but it, it will come under him. I, I truly believe that. All right. I want to thank Coach Solich for his time, for joining me. And ladies and gentlemen, I just put out an interview with Danny Woodhead, who also is going into the College Football Hall of Fame last Friday. Go check that out if you missed it. There's going to be more interviews, gut reactions, a lot. It's the most interesting, intriguing offseason of college football I've seen in quite a while. So a lot of content coming your way here in the next few months. Hit the subscribe button if you're interested. You can also, if you have nothing better to do with your life, check me out on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag Cheap plug. Some questions for you fine folks at home. Let me know your thoughts, comments, qu and responses. All right, first question. Let me know in the comments below your favorite memory of Coach Solich. Number two, would Nebraska have beaten Florida State if they'd have had a chance to play them in 1999? And number three, do you agree with Coach Solich, okay, that Nebraska will be successful in the new Big Ten? And those last couple questions, you can just simply say yes or no. All right, thanks again, Coach Solich. And until next time, Husker Nation, go Big Red. And always remember to throw the bug.